guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today and welcome back to another Planet Zoo speed build. And in today's speed build, we are not in any particular park, no current project. We are just in a blank map playing with the new pieces that came with the conservation pack and specifically building for one of the brand new animals, the Amur leopard, Amur, Amur, <laughs> the leopard that came with the pack. So as some of you may know, I do like to do this when we get a new pack, I kind of like to jump into a blank park because I just feel like it lets my creativity flow a little bit better than being stuck in kind of a pre-existing project. I mean, it's hit or miss. You know, we have added some brand new animals to Mayberry Park Zoo before um, and Sakura Zoo, but this time around I felt like just jumping in and building with the new pieces and they all are very eco-friendly kind of modern-esque vibe to them and I couldn't really find some good reference pictures that really pointed myself towards one of our current projects so I kind of felt like being in a blank map was the best for uh, for this habitat I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm using a reference picture that actually came from the San Diego Zoo. They just recently built a brand new like children's discovery area and I actually have yet to go see it in person and I really need to get myself down there and check it out because it looks fantastic. Um, but I'm using the kind of concept art that was done up for the entrance area to that as the reference for this little structure that we're building here. I love the pieces that came with the conservation pack. So as you can see here, aside from these vertical poles that we're using, because these vertical poles are actually from the habitat tab, and they came in the aquatic pack because they're part of the kind of dock pieces that we got for like the gray seal and stuff. Um, but the other pieces you can see like the wall pieces, those are the new 3D printed wall pieces, The even the beams, the wood wooden beams like the green one and uh, the blind sets, the little tilted pieces, those are all from the new conservation pack and I actually really like the blind sets because it allows you to make overhangs like this, like little pergolas or little roofs or stuff like this where normally I would have done that with individual pieces. We did this a lot with River Rock Zoo if you remember and have caught any of those episodes. I used to take just the Planet Zoo painted plank or whatever it's called. Um, and individually place, you know, each plank to make this kind of slatted uh, shade structure. And now we have these little blinds and not only are they kind of tilted at an angle, so they're a little bit more interesting, but one piece has multiple planks to it so you can really achieve this look with far less pieces in your build. So that is very exciting. We always love piece conservation. That way our parks don't get too uh, over manageable uh, too quickly so that we can keep building them. But anyway, working off of this reference picture, just kind of picking some foliage that might look nice. Again, I'm just really kind of going off of what was in the concept art for this one, which is why you can really see me kind of working piece by piece. When I work off of a reference picture, I really take like one section at a time and don't necessarily plan the entire habitat out all together before I build. So what I mean by that is at this point, I actually had no idea what shape I was going to make the actual habitat. All I cared about was that this was going to be kind of the little entrance area for people to walk in. And I wanted there to be some viewing on the left-hand side here, which is what we're working on. And then for them to be able to continue underneath those that little shade structure and view the animal from that side as well. So what I end up doing is I actually took some heavy inspiration from the Central Florida Zoo. I recently visited there in May. Yes, in May I was there and they have an Amur leopard habitat that kind of has this uh, roof structure that gets uh, extended upwards on only part of the habitat. So part of the habitat allows the leopard to really get some verticality in his habitat and kind of climb 
climb up on some rocks and logs and stuff that they have for him. So that's what I kind of did with this one where right behind this wooden wall that you're seeing, we're gonna extend up with some chain link and make it much taller. And then the rest of the habitat on the other side that we end up building will be much shorter um, and not have too many of those climbing things. So that's kind of where the two bits of inspiration that I had kind of came together. So kind of the layout from the Central Florida Zoo, give or take, you know, really just kind of using that vertical space. And then the concept art from the San Diego Zoo for overall style and look. Now, as we continue building, I did actually want to go back and talk about the Central Florida Zoo for just a minute here because normally we start to talk about the animal and the, you know, the species information and some natural history and stuff like that. But today I actually wanted to talk about the Central Florida Zoo because, as I mentioned, they do have an Amur leopard and right now they are actually fundraising to create a brand new habitat for their leopard. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the little blurb that they have on their website for you. And I'm going to go ahead and link both their website as well as my vlog video down below so that you can check both out. And they are, of course, asking for any donations. So if you are able to and capable of donating towards their Amur Leopard Habitat, their remodel for the, the Amur Leopard, that would be absolutely fantastic. They are doing wonderful things for the conservation of the Amur Leopard and their leopard's name is Tamur, by the way. Uh, their male leopard, Tamur, and their female leopard, uh, Jill Jillin, I think it is, Jillin? Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, read you the little blurb on their website. So it says, be a part of something new at the zoo. Please consider donating to help us complete our Amur Leopard Habitat expansion project. With the help from funds raised by donors and our community, we can turn our vision into a reality. The expansion will include a large viewing area extending behind our African crested porcupine habitat, which will allow zoo guests to get a closer look at this incredible species. We hope to reach our goal of funds by the end of 2022, by the end of summer of 2022, excuse me. We hope to complete construction of this expansion by the end of 2022. So end of summer is when they hope to have the funds raised and then brand new habitat completed by December of 2022. With this expansion, we hope to formally introduce our male Amur leopard and our female Amur leopard. So it sounds like they've never actually met before. So this new habitat would allow them to meet and hopefully, maybe, I mean, oh, it does say potentially raise Amur leopard cubs, therefore increasing the population of this critically endangered species. So there you go. The building of this habitat is going to directly help the conservation for the Amur leopard, and they definitely need it. They are listed as critically endangered, I believe, because they're only found in the far east parts of Russia uh, in a very, very small population in the wild. And unfortunately, when populations get so small in the wild, they are prone to a whole bunch of different dangers for them. Uh, for example, you know, very um, bad diseases can very easily wipe out small populations. The chance of inbreeding and just genetic diversity going down can have adverse effects on the population as well. So we really need to get those numbers up and have them uh, hopefully be a little bit more successful in the wild. And that way we can keep them in the wild and they don't end up as a species that is extinct in the wild and only lives in captivity. Um, but it will also help create a bigger space for their two current Amur leopards and allow for more area uh, for zoo guests to view the magnific magnificent species, excuse me. So all good things, like I said, on their website, linked down below, they have a um, design plan. So if you're only looking for some reference pictures and you wanna take a look at what their new habitat might look like. Go ahead and check that out because that actually really helped me. I didn't actually find out about this until after I built the habitat, but it's also making me feel like I kind of want to use their design plans and implement that into Mayberry Park because I feel like it might fit perfectly. They also have a little video that kind of shows the new habitat designs. And then of course they have a donation link button. And right now they are at 32% of their goal. They have currently raised 95 
$5,000 and their goal is $300,000 by the end of summer. So let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and see if we can help them out and help their Amur leopards, their male and their female, and potentially get a bigger habitat as well as see some Amur leopard cubs. It would be amazing for the species. So yeah, check that out down below in the comment section. No, in the description box, not the comment section, <laughs> in the description box. But anyway, we're going to jump back to what we are building here. And I have to say a thank you to, I think it was Tom in our community. Tom, if you're watching and I got it wrong, I mean, you can accept credit if you want to just accept credit, uh, even if I am wrong. But I believe you shared some uh, reference pictures in our Discord of some climbing structures. And I really took those and kind of used them to build what we're building now and it's just kind of obviously a bunch of logs that are sticking out of the ground that are connected with one another but they have these like circular little platforms now the leopards don't use this in game unfortunately because i used a whole bunch of different logs to give it some variety and difference in texture but the climbable pieces that i did use so like the skinny logs and stuff are from the the habitat tab they do try to climb those but because i kind of put them through a whole bunch of other pieces and whatnot. We do get a lot of floating leopards, a lot of moonwalking leopards and stuff like that. It's not necessarily the game's fault. It's just the way that I built with climbable pieces intermixed with non-climbable pieces. Uh, but if you're just looking for aesthetic purposes, I think the climbing structure looks fantastic. And uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm going to try really hard to remember. I make this one and then I make a, a smaller kind of variant of it for the other side of the habitat. I'm going to try to get that up on the workshop for you guys because I know little things like that are really usable as workshop items and I'm just atrocious at remembering to put them on the workshop for you guys. So if you don't see it on the workshop, yell at me in the comments. Like, I mean, put caps lock on and yell because I'm terrible and I need the reminder because I will never remember unless you guys help me. I mean, honest, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and finish this, this voiceover. I'm going to get it uploaded on YouTube. It should go live tomorrow. So tomorrow being Monday, I'm recording this Sunday night and then I will feel so accomplished that I got a video uploaded, I will then completely forget that this is what I said in the video and that I wanted it to be up on the workshop. So yeah, go ahead and yell at me. I won't, uh, I won't yell back. I promise I will be appreciative. Anyway, moving on to the pond, the little water fixture in here, that brand new drain may just be my favorite piece in the whole pack, not even exaggerating. I love that it actually looks like a proper drain that you would see in some sort of water feature like this. I love it, it's great. Um, I love the introduction of a lot more smaller pieces in the recent packs. So this one, we get some backstage items, which are fantastic. I do start to do a backstage area and you can see uh, here I think is actually where I start it. I start to do some shoots with a couple of what would be guillotines or electric doors or how, whatever they would be to kind of let the leopards in and out. I do two different shoots so that you could rotate, you know, animals and uh, uh, have them go in and out of the habitat at separate times, uh, or maybe they would go backstage to separate enclosures. Um, but I end up giving up because honestly, this build took me a few hours and it took me a little longer than I expected and I really needed to cut it off otherwise it was going to be a ridiculously long speed build and I'd have to speed it up uh, a lot to get it to kind of fit within 20 minutes or so. So I end up just doing an implied area. Again, I'm gonna try to get this entire habitat up on the workshop for you guys. And I feel like I set it up in a way where if you wanted to continue it and go ahead and you can design the backstage area, um, I feel like it would be relatively easy for you to do so. It was both because of time, but also just because of lack of inspiration for backstage areas. I don't know, I just, I love building the front of house, uh, the actual exhibit stuff so much much even though we got tons of wonderful backstage stuff I just for this one I wasn't feeling it so I do end up putting like a rake and a bucket and uh, we'll get there in a minute but I'm gonna address it now because I'm remembering right now 
I do place my buckets upside down and I do it on purpose and I'll tell you why. So when I uh, go to work and for those of you that don't know, I do work with animals. I actually currently work at a wildlife rehabilitation center and prior to that I worked in a humane education uh, facility with animal ambassadors and when we have buckets that live outside, we always place them upside down because if you place them right side up, little things like mice or lizards or other little creatures critters can get into the bucket and then sometimes they can't get out of the bucket and with it being so hot or if it rains or something like that unfortunately we have found little friends that have not made it because they've gotten trapped in those buckets especially if they're buckets that you don't use every day so all the buckets all over property are placed upside down so that uh, little critters don't get stuck in them and don't uh, don't die basically so that's why my buckets are upside down um, so if you want to take that little tidbit and and start placing all your buckets around your zoos upside down for just a little bit of realism. There you go. Fun facts, uh, fun facts for my work. <laughs> and there you go. There are the upside down buckets and the rake. And then for those of you that uh, are placing the rake and the shovel and other tools and stuff like that, we basically always lean them up with like the dirty end down. So the handles always upwards. Um, I don't know if that's a self-explanatory thing or not, but just how I've leaned them against the wall is how, how we lean things against the wall um, at my work. So there you go. <laughs> Some really random, obscure fun facts about uh, cleaning supplies. Another fun fact for you, not that anybody asks, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, my favorite cleaning tool of all times, if you would ask, me if I would prefer to clean something with a certain tool uh, every single time I'm gonna pick the hose. <laughs> the hose is my favorite cleaning tool. It's just so easy to wash things off of exhibit structures, rocks, climbing things, whatever it may be. Um, if it could be hosed down, that's that's my preferred method of cleaning. Um, but again, not that anybody asks. I just was thinking about it today at work actually randomly and now I thought I would mention it to you. So do with that what you will. Moving on to fencing. So I'm creating this very quick, simple little custom fence, and this is just the double barrier between the actual habitat fence and the guest. Just another little fence that says, please don't get too close. Don't put your fingers through the uh, the actual habitat fence because you might lose your fingers and that would uh, you know, not be great for anybody. So keeping the guests at a distance so they stay nice and safe and the animals stay nice and safe. It's a relatively simple fence, but I'm actually pretty happy about it. I use the brand new little beam with the conservation pack as the kind of top piece which is recolorable. It's great. I love it. It's the same beam that I used for the green of the, the overall habitat structure. And I really like it. Although I will say it is fairly similar to what we already have in game. So now we do have quite a few wooden pieces that only vary very slightly. Um, so I use them just because they're there, but you could very easily and honestly recreate this entire habitat with really the only thing missing from the conservation pack being the drain, the buckets, and the backstage items. You really could build this habitat with, with everything that we already have in the game, which do with that what you will. I am a huge fan of the conservation pack. I really am, but most of the pieces that we got were not super unique. I think that the wall set is super unique. The 3D printed wall set is absolutely phenomenal and I love that. Um, but the, like I said, the beams and the wooden stuff that we got, you really could replicate with a lot of pieces that we already have in the game. Now, I have heard some people comment on, you know, have they fixed the Amur Leopard? Are they going to fix it? Uh, honestly, I don't fully understand what is necessarily the issue with the leopard. So if you do have an issue with the leopard, let me know down below in the comment section and let me know what it is you're referring to. What do you feel like Frontier has to fix? Honestly, I... I I have no issues with it. It's just like any other big cat in the game. Um, it looks a little bit uh, cartoony to me and, and animated, but it's, it's you know, I, I feel like that's kind of the point um, because a lot of these animals obviously, I mean, well, a lot of these animals, all of these animals are video game animals. And so there is going to be a little bit, oh my goodness, bless you. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but Nalu, Nalu just sneezed right at the end of my video, Nalu. You couldn't make it like 
two more minutes and then I'll be done. Of course not, she had to be in it. Anyway, um, I feel like a lot of the animals look kind of maybe cartoony or animal-y, animal cartoony or um, animated-y, you know, and that's just kind of the point. But anyway, I digress. Please let me know um, just because I'm curious. And if somebody doesn't agree with if there's an issue or not, or somebody really thinks that there is an issue and others don't, uh, all politeness and kindness down in the comment section, please. Just curious and just want to talk about it. We're finishing off with some education signs, uh, just normal billboard signs uh, for the in-game education, but not too much else. And then we're done. Again, I will try to get this habitat up on the workshop for you guys so you can play with it yourselves. And, uh, and that's it. That's all I have for you. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the Central Florida Zoo's website down below. Let your friends know and let's see if we can do some good for the Amur leopards. I'm thinking of doing a couple charity streams for them as well to see if we can't help them out as much as we possibly can. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, do leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Engagement helps the video, and I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I will talk at you in the next video. Bye!